Hi, I'm Prof Al and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be talking about buffer solutions. And so, let's answer the obvious question to begin with, what is a buffer solution? Well, the definition of a buffer solution is that it's a solution that contains reasonable amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or vice versa, a weak base and its conjugate acid, uh, that resists change in pH on the addition of reasonable, again, amounts of a strong acid or a strong base. Okay, that's your simple definition of a buffer solution. Okay, so um, how do buffer solutions work then in that case? Well, I guess the answer to that is in the definition. Uh, a buffer solution works because it contains both uh, a weak acid and its conjugate base. And so therefore, if you add acid to a buffer solution, it can react with the conjugate base of that weak acid. If you add base to a buffer solution, it can react with the weak acid. So using um, good old acetic acid and acetate as our um, example here, let's say we've got a buffer solution that contains both acetic acid and acetate iron. So we have got acetic acid here. Let's say then we add uh, hydroxide iron to this buffer solution. What's going to happen to the added hydroxide iron? It's going to react with the acetic acid and it is going to form the acetate iron. Okay? Plus H2O. And conversely, you've got the acetate iron in your buffer solution and if you add then acid to that, H3O plus, then the added acid can react with the acetate iron and it can form free acetic acid, again, plus H2O. So those are the important equations that are going on, or the important reactions, rather, that are going on in a buffer solution. And that's why a buffer solution can uh, resist the change in pH, okay, because it essentially contains components that can react either with added acid or with added base. Okay, uh, buffers are very, very important. The maintenance of pH uh, is extremely important in all sorts of chemistry, uh, especially biological chemistry, uh, the human body. We are um, full of chemical reactions that run at specified pH values, so therefore we need to keep uh, pH in the body uh, relatively constant, and the body does that using a, var a variety of buffer solutions. Okay, so um, the question that should follow on then from buffer solutions is, well, how do you calculate the pH of a buffer solution? How do you know uh, roughly what pH your buffer solution is going to buffer around? Because that's the thing about buffer solutions. They work around specified pH values, okay? They don't buffer over the entire pH range. They only buffer on, over a small range around a particular pH. For example, uh, the acetate buffer that we have here, that will buffer at around about pH uh, 4.7 thereabouts. So anywhere between, say, three, pH 3.7 to 5.7 will be the buffering range for a, an acetate buffer. Okay, so how do we calculate then the pH of a buffer solution? Here it is, this is the important equation. pH is equal to pKa plus log of the conjugate base concentration over the concentration of the weak base, uh, the weak acid, sorry, of course. So that's an important equation. That gets a red box. That is one that you need to learn, okay? Uh, this has a name, this equation. This is called the henderson hasselbalch equation. And... Um, as I like telling my first year students, all that this thing is, is a rearrangement of the expression for Ka. Um, if you're feeling brave, you can try a rearrange Ka expression and you'll get this. Now, um, yeah, you get an equation named after you for doing a rearrangement, which, which I think is, uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting, shall we say. Um, but anyway, this henderson hasselbalch equation is used uh, to calculate the pH of a buffer. So, 
if you get a question in a test or an exam or something that mentions the word buffer solution and the word calculate, this is the equation that you are going to be using. Okay, so um, how then do we utilize this? Well, it's relatively straightforward to do calculations involving this equation. Um, and so let's have a look at an example. It's pretty much just plugging numbers into the equation, um, which is, you know, uh, nice, I guess. Nothing too difficult there. Okay, so what have we got? What's the pH of a buffer solution? <clears throat> so uh, it's got a volume of one litre uh, and uh, the concentration of CH3COOH in this buffer solution is 0 0.150 mole per litre and the concentration of the conjugate base, acetate iron, uh, is equal to 0 0.225 mole per litre. Okay, so there's your buffer solution. It satisfies the definition of a buffer solution. It contains a weak acid and it contains its conjugate base in reasonable amounts. So we just go ahead. The one thing obviously that we need to know is that the pKa of acetic acid is equal to 4.74. Okay, so plug the numbers into the equation and away you go. So pH is equal to pKa, which is 4.74, plus the log of the conjugate base concentration, which is 0 0.225 mole per litre, over the acid concentration, which is 0 0.150 uh, mole per litre. We'll just put that in there, keep everyone happy. And then if you do that calculation, you'll find that the pH comes out to be 4.92. Okay. Um, so, as I say, a relatively straightforward example there, uh, which simply involves plugging numbers into the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now, an important facet of the henderson hasselbalch equation is that the pH of any buffer solution is essentially determined by the ratio of the conjugate base to the acid, okay? Because pKa for any given weak acid is a constant. That's not going to change. This is the thing that can change here, this ratio of conjugate base to acid. You can see as this number gets larger, this ratio gets larger, the log of that is going to get larger. And so we are going to go more to the basic side of the pKa. And that makes sense because we've got more conjugate base than we have acid. Okay, so whenever that ratio is greater than one, then we're going to get a number that is on the basic side of the pKa. Now, whenever this ratio is less than one, that means we've got more acid than the conjugate base. So when that's less than one, the log of a number less than one is negative, and so therefore we are going to end up with a pH that is on the acidic side of the pKa. And again, that makes sense, because in the buffer we have more of the acid than we do the conjugate base. Okay, so that hopefully makes some sort of sense. Again, often these problems, these buffer type calculation problems end up being stoichiometry problems where you have to calculate the concentration of your acid, the concentration of the conjugate base, plug it into your henderson hasselbalch equation, and you're away. Okay, so 4.92 for the concentration of that buffer solution. Okay. So then, let's say that we take that buffer solution and let's show that it actually acts as a buffer solution. Okay, so the buffer solution that we've got, we've got acetic acid at a concentration of 0 0.150 mole per litre. We've got acetate iron, CH3COO minus, at a concentration of uh, 0 0.225 mole per litre, okay? And we have one litre of the solution. What we're now going to do is to this solution we are going to add 
100 mil of 0 0.2 mole per liter HCl, strong acid. Okay, and then the question, what is the pH? Okay, so this uh, is going to demonstrate the fact that uh, a buffer solution actually works. <laughs> it acts as a buffer, buffer solution, and we should find that adding a decent amount of concentrated acid to this buffer solution results in a relatively small pH change. So um, let's then figure out what's going on here in our buffer solution. We're adding HCl to our buffer solution. We're adding a strong acid. Now, as I mentioned before, this is going to turn into essentially a stoichiometry problem. And whenever we have stoichiometry problems, what's the first thing you do? You write your balanced chemical equation. We're adding HCl. What's the HCl going to react with? The HCl is going to react with the acetate ion to give us acetic acid, isn't it? Okay, so in other words, um, in this case, we're going to call HCl H3O plus because that's essentially what it is. Remember, there's no HCl, no undissociated HCl, it's all turned into H3O plus. So the essential reaction that's going to happen when we add our HCl to our buffer solution is H3O plus plus CH3COO minus, the acetate ion, is going to give us acetic acid plus H2O. In other words, adding HCl is now going to change the ratio of A minus to HA. And remember, that's what we said is determining the pH of our buffer solution, this ratio. So, what's going to happen when we add HCl? We're going to get less A minus, and we're going to get more HA. Okay? Now, how much? Okay, that's the question. Well, now it becomes a stoichiometry problem. So, the number of moles of HCl that we're adding is conch times volume, okay, which is 0 0.200 mole per litre, multiplied by 0 0.100 litres, and that then gives you um, 0 0.0, sorry, uh, yeah, 0 0.0200 mole. Okay, so that's the amount now of HCl that we are adding to our buffer solution. Now, from our balanced chemical equation, we're adding this number of moles of H3O plus, of HCl, okay? That then is going to react with the same number of moles of acetate ion to give you the same number of moles of acetic acid. Okay, so how much acetate ion and acetic acid have we got in the buffer solution to react with the HCl, or acetate ion anyway, okay? So, the number of moles of acetate ion, again, conch times volume, which is equal to 0 0.225 mole per litre, multiplied by one litre, that makes it nice and easy. Um, so we've got 0 0.225 mole of acetate ion. Now we've said that um, we're adding this number of moles here of HCl. That number of moles of HCl is going to react with the same number of moles of acetate ion. So therefore, initially we've got this number of moles of acetate ion before we add the HCl. After we add the HCl, the number of moles of acetate ion is going to be what we had to start off with, 0 0.225 mole, minus, because it's going to be chewed up by the HCl, minus this number of moles of acid that we're adding. Okay, So, minus 0 0.02 mole, and that is then going to give you 0 0.2, whoops, <laughs> 0 0.205 mole, of acetate ion. So that is going to be the final, we'll call that final there, and we'll call this initial. 
Okay, so that's your final number of moles of acetate iron in the buffer solution. Now, because the number of moles of acetate iron has got less, then the number of moles of um, acetic acid must have increased. And it must have increased again by this amount, the number of moles of HCl that we're adding. Okay, so the number of moles of acetic acid that we have initially is 0 0.150 mole per litre multiplied by one litre and that is 0 0.150 mole. Okay, now we know that we have used up 0.02 moles of acetate iron. That's reacted. 0.02 moles of acetate iron have reacted to give us acetic acid. So therefore, there's your initial number of moles of acetic acid. The final number of moles of acetic acid is going to be what you had initially, 0 0.150 mole plus 0 0.020 mole, and that equals 0 0.170 mole. Okay, so we've changed this ratio now. We've changed this ratio. Okay, so how do we then go about calculating the pH of the buffer solution once we've added the H3O plus? Well, now we're going to use um, these two numbers here. Okay, those are going to be the ones that we use. Okay. So we're now going to use our good old henderson Hasselbalch equation, which we'll write out. So pH is the pKa plus log of A minus over HA. Now, little trick here. Um, we can also express the henderson Hasselbalch equation in terms of numbers of moles okay, of A minus and HA, because the volume remains the same, okay, the volume of your buffer solution is constant. So we could replace those with numbers of moles, okay. So let's then go ahead and do that, and so we're going to say this is going to be equal to 4.74 plus log of, in this case, uh, 0.205 over 0 0.170, and you do that calculation, and you end up with 4.82. Sure. Okay. A big calculation there. Right, we started off with our buffer solution at a pH of 4.92. We added a decent amount, reasonable amount certainly, of strong acid, of HCl. And the pH only dropped by 0.1 of a pH unit, which is a small change given the fact that you're adding quite a bit of HCl there, okay? So these are the sorts of calculations that you'll probably be expected to do with buffer solutions. Um, and again, as I say, a lot of it is just stoichiometry, playing around with stoichiometry. And then you use your henderson Hasselbalch equation. So if you're okay, if you're up with your stoichiometry and you can figure out what's going on, uh, in terms of the actual reaction in the buffer solution, then these sorts of calculations hopefully won't hold too many terrors for you. Okay, so uh, that's it for buffer solution calculations for today. We'll see you in the next video.